computer. All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the uh, phone script workshop. My name is Stephen Yee. I am your host today. Um, I wanted to be able to kind of share with you a few things that I do on the phone that I tr uh, train a lot of new agents on as well. Um, regardless if you do this via telesales or face-to-face, -face, it's basically the same in my opinion, okay? Uh, but I'm going to give you guys a few things, uh, a, a few of the um, tips, I guess you can say. For example, like what time I like to dial. That's a big, that's a big nugget. Um, how I dial them, what phone systems that I use, right? To make your guys' life easier. So um, before we start that, I want you to understand something about our clients too. Like, by the way, I'm not mistaken. Like, Courtney, our clients are different and they're unique. And here's what I mean. No way in hell in my life would I ever fill out a form and send it back to a stranger with my name phone number, date of birth, address on there. I, I just wouldn't do it. I don't think you guys would too. I think, maybe, I don't know. Our clients are the 2% of America that would. So like when you go, hey, Steve, I wouldn't, like when I go, hey, you got to call your clients this way. And you go, ah, I wouldn't do it that way. And I'm like, right, right, right. You wouldn't do it that way. You wouldn't like it if somebody did it to you that way. But you would also not want to fill out a form too though. So you can't think the same way as our clients because you're not our clients. Fair? So I'm going to give you guys a few things, all right? I'm going to run through a few different tips. I'm going to run through like seven, eight tips. We're going to run through phone script. I'm going to give you guys the objections, how I overcome them as well, all right? One of the first things that I tell people, and this is going to go, you're going to be like, whoa, that's, that's a lot. I call every single one of my clients three times in a row. You're like, you're going to call me three times in a row, Stephen Yee? Absolutely. You want to know why, Courtney? Because if you don't have my phone number saved in your phone, and I called you, and it popped up, 626 you know what you would do? Send me the voicemail. Right? And everybody on here would too. Every single one of you guys would send me the voicemail. Right? So I say that because... That one second, let me spotlight this. Um, that's the reason why I would call you. So, like, think about this. If I called you one time, you don't know the you don't know the person sending it to voicemail. I call you a second time, you're like, what? Like telemarketers don't call me two times in a row. Eh, send a voicemail. If I called you a third time in, in like three times in one minute, chances of you answering that call is a lot higher because you're like, this is probably an emergency because I don't know who this is, but they're calling me a lot. And you would probably pick up the phone. My goal is to get you to pick up the phone, right? So that's one reason why I call people three times in a row. You'd be surprised how many people that we've called, myself personally, and a bunch of the agents that I work with, where we'll call them three times in a row. And they answer on the third call. And they go, hello? Like, they don't even scream and shout. They're just like, why'd you call me so much? Because you fit out a form. And I go right into the phone script. Does that make sense? Everybody understand that part? Cool. All right. Second part, phone systems. So who was that? All right. Well, if you guys have questions, I'll answer them at the end. I promise. I'll give you plenty of time. All right. Uh, well, before that, I'm going to mute the entire line. Um, the second thing, phone systems. Okay. Now, I was old school. Like four years ago, we didn't have the technology we had today. So like I literally picked up the phone and manually entered all the numbers that I called. And I was fine with it. Matter of fact, I wish people did it that way sometimes. Okay. Um, we have a bunch of phone systems now that make your life easier. So here's what I mean. Um, there's a phone system out there called Ringy, R-I-N-G-Y. And it's a phenomenal phone system, especially for internet leads. You can put all your leads into this system, log on to this phone system and literally click on your computer, click to call and literally not touch your phone. And it'll call every single one of your leads for you. Whether it's two, if you go, Hey, I want to call them three times in a row. They'll call it three times in a row, two times in a row. However you want to do it. It's an automated dialer. Now, why do we have that? Because a lot of people waste time manually pressing the numbers. So like these really, really smart people, what they did is they were like, hey, why don't you just upload the leads into the CRM 
and we'll just call it, we'll call your clients. So like, let's say I'm calling Jamie and Jamie's, I'm calling Jamie's number right now. Well, his client profile will show up on my computer. Jamie Lagore, date of birth is this, address is this, like I'll have the entire information. So if Jamie actually answered, I'd be able to see his information. I'm not guessing, which is pretty cool, right? Um, Ringy also text messages your clients so that some of them will pre-book themselves into your calendar, which is pretty neat. Extra sales are always fun, right? I like Ringy. I like carrying multiple numbers on Ringy. Um, every phone number that you add it, I think it's like a dollar. It's very inexpensive. Um, our, a lot of the agents in our group use Ringy um, because of how well it is. There's another system out there called Phone Burner. Acts identical to Ringy. Two things I don't like about them is number one, it's more expensive. And number two, when you call clients, it sometimes pops up as scam likely. I don't like that. So because if you call me and it says scam likely, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> Just being real. Like y'all, y'all wouldn't either. Right. So I don't like phone burner as much. Ringy is cheaper. We like them. Um, not only that, we have our agents that do very, very well on them. They have their templates already set up. So when you go, when you go to Ringy and purchase their phone system, you can ask them to put their um, templates into your account. And I think it's like a hundred bucks a month, which is not bad at all. Okay. Now, for those of you that go, well, screw it. I'm not going to use an automated dialer. I'm going to hand dial just like you did. Cool. There's a few phone systems that are used for that too. Okay. One of them was called Ring Central. Ring Central was like 60 bucks a month. Um, every phone number was like three to four bucks. And I can like rotate numbers. Um, Ring Central was not a CRM. It was just a, basically a, a phone number. Okay. Um, I used another thing called Burner. Burner is, I think, 20 bucks a month but you get four numbers. I wrote I rotated that around as well. Google voice is free. Wouldn't be a bad idea. And then I used to, I, I would also star 67 and then put their number in, which means I call as a block number or an unknown number. You'd be surprised how many people answer on that, right? So back when I was running appointments, that's what I did. I used um, star six, seven a lot, Google voice a lot, burner a lot. Those were some of my favorite phone systems, okay? Now, um, the other thing I can tell you, uh, my favorite time to dial was from 7.30 in the morning until 10.30 in the afternoon, and then from 4 in the afternoon until 8.30 at night. I don't know why. I just booked more appointments during those time slots. You couldn't argue with it. I think I know why, because from 7.30 to 10, most of your seniors, they're having lunch already because they're... They've been up since like four or five, right? Y'all know what I mean? Um, the other thing, telemarketers don't call around that time. The other, one of the things I can tell you is like, I did my very best to not be a telemarketer. So I want you to think about this. If a telemarketer is on this side, we're like on the exact opposite. A telemarketer is going to call you one time. When you speak to a telemarketer, they're usually excessively happy. And that's really weird. Right, Courtney? Like, Courtney? Hey, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in. I'm not doing that. That's creepy. That's really weird. I'm not doing that, right? I am a, I'm on the exact opposite side. I'm like a disgruntled state employee. I feel like I work for the DMV. So like if I were to call you, I go, Courtney, Courtney, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in to help pay for your funeral and burial expenses. It was the one that you put your date of birth as January 1st, 1970. Is that right? And your address is 1234 Main Street in Las Vegas. See the difference? Monotone here the whole time. I hate my job, but I got to do it. That's how I booked appointments. Some, and here's what's crazy. It worked really well for me. And it works a lot for a lot of the top agents. That's why when you watch a lot of these dialing videos, they say be level-headed, be monotone the whole time, right? Now, if you're naturally bubbly, that's cool. But like, don't, don't overdo it. Like, don't, don't be that telemarketer. Like, they can tell it's fake. You know what I mean? So the other reason why I start at 7.30 is because telemarketers are not allowed to call at 7.30. So like when you call someone at 7.30, they're like, who's calling? Because a telemarketer can't call this early. So they naturally answer the phone more at that time frame, right? Now, here's what I can tell you. I'm telling you guys right now, those are my favorite times to dial. 7.30 is a great time to start. The tough part about people that are independent contractors that are 1099, 
because I'm telling you it's at 730, you're probably going to start dialing the phone at like 842 because nobody's going to watch over you and fire you if you don't do it. Right now, if you worked a job and the boss said you got to be at the office at 715 and the phone, the first call rings at 730, you do it. If you had that same discipline here, you'd make a lot of money. Right. That's just my opinion. So um, next thing, um, you have to dominate the first seven seconds of the phone call. OK, it's like an elevator pitch. I always tell people it's kind of like, um, you know, like people always go like, what's an elevator pitch? An elevator pitch is like when you have a really wealthy person in an elevator and you're trying to share your business idea with them to have them invest in you. You only have the elevator ride <laughs> to pitch them. Right. It's the same thing on the phone. If you are not confident in that first seven seconds of what you say, they will hang up and never answer the phone again. Right. So for me, I always tell people dominate the first seven seconds. Those that line should be rehearsed. I always tell people I have one phone script for every type of lead. The only thing that changes is my opening, right? If I'm calling a mortgage protection lead, I'm going to say, Jamie, Jamie, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in to help pay for your mortgage in case of a death or disability. It was the one that you put your date of birth as whatever, right? If I'm calling a final expense lead, same thing. Jamie, Jamie, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in to help pay for your funeral and burial expenses. It was the one that you put your date of birth as whatever, right? If I'm calling an internet lead, it's Jamie, Jamie, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you fit on online for life insurance. It was the one that you put your date of birth as whatever, right? The only thing that changes in my entire phone script is where I'm calling from based on the lead type. Everything else, when I'm verifying the information, it's on a piece of paper. It's on the form, right? If they put their date of birth as January 1st, 1970, that's what I'm going to say. If they say my address is 1234 Main Street in Las Vegas, that's what I'm going to say. You don't need a phone. You don't need a script for that, right? So like if you look at the, the successful phone scripts at Family First Life, like I always tell people this. If you looked at all the Hall of Fame producers, I think there's like 180 of them, right? And you recorded every single one of them making phone calls, none of them would sound the same. Because we all speak differently, have different vernacular. Some people speak with an accent, some people don't. Some people talk fast, some people talk slow. Everybody says things differently. But if you were to look at their actual phone script, you would break it down like this. Part one is who they are, where they're calling from. Part two is verifying the information. Part three is booking the actual appointment. And then part four is confirming that they'll be there. That's it. It's not that hard, right? So like some of y'all, I, I think we kind of shared this with you guys before. If not, I'm going to pull it up on my website right now so y'all can see it. This was my phone script, okay? One phone script, everything. Y'all see this? Yes, no, maybe so. Cool. So this was my phone script. One Steven, second. sorry, one question. Um, is there a way we can get a copy of that phone script? Yeah, fflonlinetraining.com. Okay, it's all there? It's always been there, yeah. That's why I always okay, tell people so to save that website because it's your, it's your resources to everything that you'll need. I'm so sorry, I'm coming in late. fflonlinetraining.com. Really simple. Got it. Okay. So if you go to fflonlinetraining.com, it'll take you to here. If you do virtual sales, click that. If you do scripts, phone scripts, that's my phone script right there. Really easy. Okay. So it'll pop this up. Once again, as you can see, part one, who you are, where you're calling from. Now, me personally, I don't like to lie to clients. Other people, they love doing that stuff. I'm not that guy. Right. Some people will go, hey, um, Hey, Sharon, this is Steven from the Mortgage Protection Office. Am I? No. And the reason why I didn't like saying that was because I actually had a client ask me one time, what's the address? And I couldn't come up with one because it's not true. And so I was like, I vowed to myself that I would never, ever lie to my clients again. And you don't need to, right? Some people do. Some people go, hey, I'm getting back to you about the form from Bank of America. I'm like, dude, don't try to make yourself look like you work for Bank of America. Because you know, and that's a lie, right? So like specifically, 
this opening was written so you do not lie to your clients and you can get them to remember what they fit out. So right here, final expense, it's I'm getting back to you because you are about the form that they sent back in to help pay for funeral and burial expenses because that's what it says on the form, right? Mortgage protection, I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in to help pay off the house in case of a death or disability because that's what it says on the form. Internet lien, I'm getting back to you about the form you fit out online for life insurance. Like, Courtney, this isn't hard, right? Like, this is pretty simple, I think. This is why when people go, I need, I need your script. I'm like, no, no, no. This is, just have a conversation. A structured conversation, right? Part two, I'm verifying. So like, let's say they gave me an age. They didn't give me a date of birth. I go, Courtney, I have your data. I have your age as 37. Is that correct? Why? Because I don't have the date of birth. I'm just going to verify whatever they give me. I have your email address as hellokitty at gmail.com. Is that right? Okay, cool. Right? Like I'm, I'm only going to verify what I have. You know what I mean? And then I go, once again, I'm going to set the appointment. Perfect. Once again, my name is Steven. I'm the field underwriter that's assigned to your case. If I'm doing face-to-face, -face, I'm going to, they have me in your area this upcoming Tuesday. What works better for you, Courtney, morning, afternoon? She says morning. I go, great. Eight or 9.30. Y'all see how this is a conversation, right? Like you don't need to make this scripted, right? Now, some people do it differently and that's perfectly fine too, but I'm a big fan of less is more, right? I'm, I'm just a big fan of that, right? And then part four is, hey, John, grab a pen and paper. Let me know when you're ready. My name is Steven. Agent code is this. And what time is our appointment again? Cool. Now I challenge them one more time. I go, hey, is there any reason why you won't be home tomorrow at eight o'clock? I should, uh, should be, should be or will be. Because if you're not going to be there, you might as well tell me now so I can take you out, put somebody else in, right? That's a takeaway in sales, right? You take it away from them to see if they really want it. Now, here's the thing. If I say that and they don't want to be there, they were going to no-show you anyways. Stop booking fake appointments. You know, I always told people an appointment was they knew I was coming over for life insurance and I knew I was going to go see them for life insurance. If we both knew it was for life insurance, I was game. Right now, here's the other thing I can tell you. I'm going to share with you a telesales phone script, which is very similar. OK, uh, one second. Let me move this over. Right. John. Hey, John, this is my buddy Orlando. I'm giving you a call uh, about the. See, like he does this. I don't care if you want to do it. Go ahead. Calling you here from the insurance benefit center about the form you fit out looking for life insurance plans. Put your date of birth as this. Correct. Okay, great. This part right here. This part right here is the big deal. If you're doing virtual sales, this will give you a leg up and will save you a ton of time. Okay. Now, they're, they're what we call power questions. And what that means is it's going to allow you to know where to take the client. Now, John, have you been shopping for insurance for a while now, or am I the first person you've been talking to? Why is that such a big deal? Because if they've been shopping for a long time, your job is to be able to close them then. If you're the first person they've talked to, your job is to close them then. You will be able to know if they've been shopping or not. Okay. Next question. Are you looking to get coverage just for yourself, or are you looking to get coverage for a spouse as well? Why is that an important question? Because if someone has a spouse, if someone's married, they usually don't make decisions by themselves. They got to run it by their spouse. Am I right? Like there's a lot of women on the call. Like if your husband made a, a decision without asking you, you're probably sleeping in the doghouse. Fair, right? So I say that because it's the same thing here. See, the number one objection you're going to get when you're running appointments is, especially if you sit on a one-legger, is I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my husband. Well, if the husband and the wife are there at the same time, right, you eliminate that objection because they're both there. Does that make sense? So that question is to be able to find out if this person is getting insurance for themselves or not, because we're going to try to see how many people we need at that appointment. Now, let's just say the guy goes, I'm only getting insurance coverage for myself. My wife passed a long time ago. Cool. I can start the appointment right now if I wanted to, right? But if the client goes, hey, I'm actually looking at giving coverage for my spouse as well. Perfect. 
Hey, John, is, is Mary there with you right now? No, she's not. Okay, great. When's a good time for the both of you guys to be here together so I can go over the options that you guys can qualify for, right? Because I'm not going to do the appointment with John only if Mary's not there. Does that make sense? That's why we say it's a power question. Next thing, are you working or are you retired? Because if once, um, I'm asking, are you working or are you retired? Why? Because if they're working, chances are they're probably not going to be free until the evening. If they're retired, I can probably do that appointment whenever I want. Does that make sense? Hey, do you get your benefit, uh, benefits paid to you in a traditional bank or a direct express card? Right? Why is that a big deal? Because based on how they receive money will be which insurance, uh, which insurance company we go to. Right? And then the last question is, have you ever had any life insurance before or would this be your first time applying? Why is that a big deal? Because if they have applied for life insurance before, they already know that they can give you their social security number and their banking information. For those of you that are running virtual, those are your two toughest objections. Like, think about this. Like, y'all can see me, right? So this is definitely not a telesale. This will be a Zoom call. But like, if I called Courtney and she doesn't know who the hell I am, and it's the first time I spoke, and I go through all this information with her and I'm go, give me your social security number. She'd be like, what? Matter of fact, give me your banking account info as well. She's like, I don't even know you. I know. And this is the reason why I always tell people, telesales can be hard, but if you know how to set up the table and set the structure, you can make it really easy, right? So this last part, by the way, this, this is nothing different than the other phone script. It's just that after we verify the information, we're going, instead of trying to book an appointment, we're asking a few questions and trying to do the appointment right there, right? So in, in virtual sales, we, let me take that back. In selling period, whether you're virtual or face-to-face, -face, we do something called setting the table. What setting the table means is I'm going to explain to my client what's going to happen during this appointment. That's what is known as setting the, uh, setting the table. So in this situation, I'm going, okay, John, my job is real simple. I'm just the underwriter for the state of Nevada. My job is to see if you qualify or do not qualify. And if you do qualify, I'm going to give you a few different options. Once you decide which one fits your budget the best, at that point, you either need to apply for the coverage or decline it. Does that make sense? Now, if you apply for the coverage, I'm going to, the insurance company is going to need some basic information like your name, date of birth, address, social, and banking information. Is that something you're comfortable with doing over the phone today? Here's the reason why that's a big deal. If they're going to tell you no right there, don't waste your time. But if they're like, yeah, I'm comfortable with doing that, proceed to the financial inventory. All right, John, grab a pen and paper and let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, John, how young are you? Okay, what current meds do you take? Now I'm, now I'm collecting the information. I'm going to go quote them and sell them. Does that kind of make sense? Yes? No? Maybe so? Cool? Awesome. Um, boom, boom. Let me close that out. All right. The other thing about dialing. When I dial, kind of like what I shared with you guys, I'm going to triple dial. I'm going to call you three times in a row. This is going to mess some of y'all up. I'm going to call you three times in the morning, three times in the afternoon, three times at night. I'm going to call you nine to 15 times if I have to. Because my sole job is to get you to answer the phone. Now, some of you guys right now are looking at me crazy going, you're going to call that guy. How many times? Dude. And you're like, and you're going, if you call me that many times, I'd be pissed. I would be too. However, I would never fill out a form for anything. Does that make sense? Like, that's the, re like, I want you guys to understand that. Like, I... I would never fill out a form. I don't think you guys would. So like you can't take your thought process and place it onto the client, right? Um, so the other thing, I call you three times in the morning, three times in the afternoon, three times at night. In the afternoon, if you haven't answered that sixth phone call, I'm going to text you. Now, y'all ready for this super duper awesome text script that I'm going to share with y'all? Like It works so well. Jot it down. So great. Okay. People always ask me, Steve, you sell a lot of insurance. What do you text your clients? Be ready. D. I take a picture of the lead. 
and I go, Courtney, comma, is this you, question mark. That's my text. Because here's what I can tell you, and this is factual, okay? A lot of people will not answer your phone. They won't look at your emails. But if you send them a text, they would read it. But they might not respond, but they'll open and read it. That's facts, right? So if I sent, let's just pretend I sent Courtney a screenshot, a picture of the uh, of her, the form that she sent in. And I go, Courtney, is this you? Yes. Hi, Courtney. My name is Steven. I've been trying to get a hold of you about the form you sent back in. When's a good time to speak? That's it. See, like a lot of people, what they do is to send a paragraph. It's like a rookie mistake. They put their whole phone script in text message. Hey, Jamie, this is Steven from the Mortgage Protection Office here in Clark County in Las Vegas. You sent back a form to help pay off your funeral and burial expenses. My job was to be able to get the information out to you. I'm the local field underwriter. I'm assigned to your case. They have me dispatched in this area this upcoming Tuesday and Wednesday. What works better for you Monday or uh, Monday morning or Tuesday at 3 p.m. or Wednesday at 6 p.m. And I'm like, I'm not reading that. And your clients probably aren't either. Does that make sense? So make it really easy. First name, client's first name, comma, is this you? They'll send yes. After that, then you can introduce who you are. Makes it real simple, okay? Um, I wouldn't text all your clients. By the way, if you, te like, if you text clients and you book appointments, it's good. I wouldn't text my clients in lieu of dialing the phone down. That's a really bad idea. Just, just being honest. Some people, it's, a, it's avoidance behavior. So they go, oh, I can text my clients? Perfect, I'm not gonna dial, I'll just text them all. Really bad idea, okay? Um, so don't do that. The other thing I can tell you about the phone, there's only about three real objections. Everything's a variation of this objection, okay? So here are the three objections that you'll get on the phone. Number one, it's, I don't remember filling it out. Okay. Number two, I'm no longer interested. And number three is I already got it taken care of. Okay. Every objection is a variation of one of those three. I promise you. I already got it taken care of. Also sounds like this. Hey, Courtney, I already got life insurance. Right. So here's the other thing I can tell you. Your clients, our clients, I should say, our clients, all of our clients don't come together to hold meetings on learning new objections to give us. They don't. But we as agents hold meetings on how to overcome the objections they give us. We should be on the offensive and we should have the leg up. Fair? So like I tell people this because if there's only three objections, you should learn a few rebuttals to all these objections. If you can learn a few rebuttals to some of these objections, you would dominate the phone. Once again, what I can tell you, because I've been doing this for a very, very long time, when we have brand new agents dial the phone. They can open the call very strongly, right? Hey, David, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in to help pay for your house in case of a death or disability. David, like I can say that first seven seconds pretty strong. And then David goes, I don't remember filling it out. And then what happens to the brand new agent is they stutter, they freak out, client hangs up. Or they get combative, argumentative. Look, arguing and being combative with your clients, not even your clients, but like with anybody is never a good idea. Especially if you're trying to get someone to buy something from you, <laughs> right? So like, don't argue, don't get combative, right? If it's like one of the things I'm going to tell you is if it's not a big deal for you, it's not a big deal for them. <clears throat> it's only a big deal for them if you make it a big deal. I'll give you an example. When, people, when I call people, let's say I call Drayton. I go, Drayton, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in. She goes, I don't remember sending a form back in. I go, that's not a problem because I don't even remember what I ate for breakfast this morning. Anyways, it was the one that you put your date of birth is January 1st, 1972. You know, is that right? Y'all see that? like. Like she tried to throw an objection 
And most of the time, brand new agents goes, what do you mean? What do you mean you don't remember filling it out? You, you, you write your Ds like this, like the bottom part is dragged out and your Ys are a little curvy and, and you sent this in. Like we mailed this to you like three months ago and you sent it in. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to go, oh, you don't remember filling it out? Nah, not a big deal. I don't remember eating breakfast anyways, right? Uh, hey, it was the one that you put your date of birth as this. Is that right? Right back to phone script. And your address is 1234 Main Street in Denver. Is that right? Yes. The objection's gone, right? If you minimize the objection, it can be that way. If you want to maximize it, it can be that way too. So like for me, I like to minimize objections. My opinion, objections are all fake in smoke screens. It's just your client trying to see if you really want to come out and protect them or not. Here's what I can tell you. The clients that are the hardest to book are the easiest ones to sell. The ones that are easy to book, it's the hardest ones to sell. You want to know why? Because if it was easy for you to book, it was easy for everybody else to book them. So not only did they let you in the house, they let your competitors, and that competitor, and that competitor, they have like 17 people in the house. That's why we asked the question, am I the first person that you spoke with or have you been shopping around? Does that make sense? So like a good phone script, in my opinion, you'll overcome one to two to three objections at least. If you overcome more than that, a little too much, get off the phone. If one to two to three objections, that's a solid book if you can get it. The other thing is your clients are pretty damn smart. They're going to give you the same objection like three times. Here's what I mean. David, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in. I'm not interested. Perfect, David. I'm not interested in seeing you either. But because you fed out a form, I got to get the information out to you. When are you home? Morning, afternoons, or evenings? Steven, I'm not interested. I totally understand, David. So you see, he gave it to me twice, right? I can't give him the same response twice. So what I'm going to say is, David, most people are not interested because it's either too expensive or they couldn't qualify. Which one was it for you? Steven, I'm not interested. Perfect, David. I just have to come up, drop the information off. Whatever you do with it, it's totally up to you. I really don't care. I'm covered. If something happened to me, my wife and my kids are taken care of. I just want to make sure your wife and kids are taken to what time you're home, right? Like I have to learn multiple rebuttals for the same objections because some of your clients will give you the same objection two to three times. So like if you, if they stunt you or they stump you, I should say, and you can't overcome it, click. Does that make sense? So like learn a few objections or rebuttals, I should say for a few uh, uh, objections. So for example, right? Like um, I'm no longer interested, right? I go, perfect. I agree with them. So write this down. There's, there's a technique that my buddy uh, Alex Strait teaches. It's really, really good, by the way. It's called triple A, okay? A, 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 three A's, okay? The first A stands for to agree with them. So whatever objection they give you, instead of arguing with them, right? Because then you give them the power, you agree with them. Hey, Steven, I'm not, I'm no longer interested. Awesome. Perfect. Great. Right? Second A stands for acknowledge, right? So I'm going to acknowledge that whatever the objection was. And then the third A is ask a question. I'll show you how that works. Okay. So agree, acknowledge, ask a question. I call David. David goes, I'm no longer interested. I go, perfect, David. Most of the time when people tell me they're no longer interested, that's the acknowledgement. It's because it's either too expensive or, could, or it's because they couldn't qualify. Which one are you? I agree with them. I acknowledge them. I ask them a question. When I ask a question, I retain control. Okay, write this down. Those of you taking notes. The person that asks the most questions wins. You ever watch? Uh, you ever watch like um, TV shows or like cops interviewing bad bad people, bad guys? Who's always asking the questions? The cops. John, where were you Friday at eleven thirty p.m.? Right. When you ever go to the doctor's office, who asks the questions? Usually the doctor. Hey, Jamie, why are you here? How long has it been hurting? Is the pain central or is it radiating? Does it spread? How long has it been hurting? What medications do you take for it? What does it feel like when you take that medication? What does it feel like if I do this? They're the ones that are always asking the questions, right? The person that's always in control asks questions. 
So like if your clients give you a question that you can't answer, they win. They got control. If you ask them a question, you retain control. All right. So I like using Alex's method. Agree, acknowledge, ask a question. I think it's phenomenal, right? Um, so for example, let's say I call David and David goes, I already got it taken care of. I already got life insurance. I go, perfect. You're going to make my life so much easier, David, right? I'm going to acknowledge him. Um, most of my clients that uh, fill out a form, they were shopping for the best possible rate. What are they going to say? No, right? So I agree with them. Perfect. Most of my clients that fill out a form, they're trying to shop for the best possible rate. David, they have me out in your area this upcoming Tuesday. What works best for me to come over and review the policy that you have so I can strengthen your position? I ask them a question. Agree, acknowledge, ask a question. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, no, maybe. All right, cool. Anybody have any questions so far about this? Steven, I have a question for you, please. What's up, David? By the way, David is a, uh, David sells a lot of insurance. His first year, he protected over 350 families. But what's up, David? First of all, everything I learned is from Steven. So I do have a question for you, Steven, please. Yep. For a lot of new agents, uh, if they get hung up on, a lot of times they either take it personally or they are afraid to call back. We yep. talked about earlier calling each client three times, six times, nine times. So when a client hangs up on you, even though you try to overcome the objection, the natural thing to do is for us to either to move on or to call them right back. Right. So what I do, <laughs> see, this is why David is a top producer because he's asking loaded questions. Well, it's a great question, actually. Um, number one, I want you to understand this for every single one of you guys, because most of you guys on here are, most of you guys are new agents. You got to, you, number one is you can't take it personal. They don't know you. Your clients don't know you. They're not saying no to you. They're saying no to having you come over for life insurance. When I learned that, I was like, oh, not everybody hates me in the world. Got it. Good to know. Right? Because they're like, if, by the way, you're going to get people that tell you no, and there's going to be rejection here. Like, you don't get to make a quarter million dollars a year, a half a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year, and it'd be easy because everybody would do it, right? So like, you're going to have rejection. So part of that is you got to remember, it's not you. It, they're not, they don't know you. Here's a good example. Like, let's say I call Al, okay? And Al's like, you know, I'm like, hey, Al, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in. Um, and he's like, I'm not interested. Click. Well, here's what I didn't know. Al might've had a bad day at work. Al might've got some crappy news from his kids or his spouse. Or I caught him when he was in the middle of doing three different things and he just got yelled at by his boss. I'm, I just happen to be the guy that he displaces his anger on, right? By the way, and if I saw Al at the supermarket, he wouldn't even know it's me. He walked right by me. So like you can't take the objections directly at you at heart because it's not for you. They're just saying no to the insurance, right? Once I understood that, my life became so much easier because I was like, okay, cool. Differentiate yourself from a telemarketer, disgruntled state employee. I can definitely be that person, right? Um, and then David says something about like, what do I do? Real simple. Like if someone hangs up on me, I'm calling them back. And I'm calling them back this way. So like, let's say I call Courtney. I go, hey, Courtney, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you sent back in. She's like, I already got it taken care of. I'm like, perfect, not a big deal. Clay, <sighs> I'm going to call Courtney back. Hey, Courtney, I'm sorry. I got disconnected. I have bad reception where I'm at. What I was saying was, right back in the phone script. She hangs up on me again. I'm calling her right back. Why? Because I'm not, I want y'all to think about this, okay? What if that was Courtney's last day? How hard would you press to get into that home? If you were playing God and you were like, that's her last day of life. Let me, let me share a story. And by the way, the story that I'm going to tell you is real. Um, 
my first year in business, I hated running appointments, which is really weird because a lot of people hate dialing. I love dialing, hated running appointments. Um, so I dialed for a good friend of mine named Joe. He's the guy that recruited me. And so I called this family. Uh, I vividly remember their names, Michael and Susan. I remember the last name as well. And I called, uh, Michael filled out a form. Michael and Susan's name was on the lead card. So when I, when they, when I called, uh, Susan answered, I said, hi, is this Michael? Susan that answered, right? Why do I say that? Because Michael filled out a form. She's like, no, this is Susan. I'm like, I'm, I'm looking to get back. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of Michael. He filled out a form to help pay for funeral and burial expenses. She goes, oh, no, I did that. Looking for it for Michael and me. I was like, awesome. Go through my phone script. Hey, the field underwriter, his name is Joe Miller. He'll be there tomorrow around 10 o'clock. Is there any reason why you won't be home? Right? I vividly remember Susan going, hey, Michael, like yelling on the phone. Hey, Michael, uh, the insurance guy's coming tomorrow at 10. Are we okay with that? And literally Michael's screaming from one side of the room to the other. Tell him to come on over. I was like, shoot, this is a lay down. Joe's going to sell both of these clients. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a lay down. That's an easy one, right? So Joe shows up at 945. He gets out of the car. He's walking up the stairs, the steps to the house. Guy, uh, a young guy pushes out the screen door, crying. He goes, who the are you to Joe? And Joe's like, I'm the insurance guy. I have an appointment with Michael and Susan. He goes, you're late. My dad just died from a heart attack. And I spoke with him yesterday night. So I say that because when I had that happen, I was like, cool. I don't care how many times they hang up on me. I don't want them to be like Michael and Susan. Does that make sense? So, um, David, to answer your question, they can hang up on me, whatever. I'm going to call them back. By the way, this is a, this is a hall of fame tip. And like, this is so completely backwards, but like this, this changed my business. Do not write notes on your leads because you will judge them. And here's what I mean. So let's say I called Art and Art cussed me out and hung up on me. Some of y'all will write stuff on your leads. He's an a-hole. He's a jerk. So what happens is the next time that lead pops up, you naturally skip him because you remember that, uh, that conversation y'all had, right? So you naturally don't call him. Once again, not knowing if he was having a bad day or whatever it can be, right? So I stopped doing that and that changed my business. And like some weird reason why to have a pretty good memory of who says bad things to me. So like I stopped writing notes down and I remember one time, and by the way, it's happened a lot of times, but like, I like telling this story. I had a lady, she was sweet. I called her, she like ripped me a new one. And I was like, wow, that was really mean. Click. So I didn't even bother calling her back. I'm not even going to lie about it. I was like, I'm just going to put her back in the stack, right? I'll call her back a few days from now. Caught her a week and a half later. She was a night, like when I, when I caught her, she was nice as hell. I set the appointment and I go see her in person. I'm not like vengeful, so I won't bring it up. But I was doing the financial inventory, collected all the information, quoted her, gave her three options. She chose one sold it, right? She bought. And I vividly remember she cussed me out like a week and a half ago. And I'm like, hey, Mary, I don't know if you remember, but I had called you about a week and a half ago and you kind of like screamed at me. She was like, oh, that was you, baby? I was like, yeah. She's like, I had a bad day. I was like, I can tell. She's like, I'm glad you decided to call me back though because I definitely needed this. But if I didn't, 
What if all the other people that cussed me out, I called them back again, they cussed me out again, but she was the one that needed the insurance. I'm good, dude. You know what I mean? So, sorry, long-winded answer, short question. Sorry, David, but if anybody has any other questions. Um, hey, Steve, I got a question. What's up, man? Oh, okay. So um, I'm, I'm dialing by the phone, right? Now, right. did you have like a second phone or did you just like rotate your, get your number changed? Because I'm running into a lot of kickback with like some of the leads I dialed. See my phone? Just start the screen. Like, okay. Yeah. I, I had a personal cell phone. This is my personal cell phone. This is my work. Okay. I, okay. I made calls from my work phone, but I also had a bunch of different numbers purposely. By the way, by the way, I rotated phone numbers every three days. Why? Oh, okay. So I'm not going to quick enough. Right. So like, let's say I called Jordan three times today or nine times today, nine times tomorrow, nine times the day after that. The next time I call him, he's going to be like, I've seen this number 20 times. He's not going to answer. But if I change the number and he somehow answers, I got him to do exactly what I want him to do, which is answer the phone. Money. Yep. Cool. And that's why sometimes I start six, seven. I, so it's, you, when you start six, seven, you call from a block number. I do that too. You know, uh, why? Because I don't know. They, people answer the phone when they answer the phone. It's weird. I can't, I wish I can tell you when, you know, but that's what I did. Um, Drayton said, at what point do you close out a lead when I sit down with them or door knock them? I don't have a reason to take them out besides those reasons. You know what I mean? Me personally. So I, I built my business on having, so like, you know, I remember in high school for some of y'all, that's been a minute like myself. Um, y'all had like four inch ring binders. That was like my lead binder. And like in the beginning, I didn't have that much. Right. So what I did was I sectioned off uh, every lead by the areas I was running and the newest leads always went on top. So I'd always cough from top down. And so like, sometimes my leads didn't come in. Sometimes I'd have money for new leads, whatever it may be. I just kept going through the list from top down. And I wouldn't take somebody out unless I had an appointment with them. If they had no showed me the appointment, I'm putting it right back in. If I sat on them, whether I sold it or not, they're completely out because I already sat on them. I did what I needed to do. Um, if they hung up on me, cussed me out, whatever it is, I put it right back in because I'm like, they had a bad day. I'll just get back to them when I get back to them, you know? So um, I built my lead binder as big as I could so that if, you know, you're going to book appointments in week three from the leads you bought in week, in week one, you will. You're not always going to just book the appointments from the leads you bought that week. And my goal was to be able to stack the deck to have so many leads that it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Like I was just trying to get my 15 for the next two days, 30 for the entire week. Once I had that number, I was done. So like, I put the newer stuff up top because it's quicker and easier to dial the new stuff because it's less objections. But if I ran through my new stuff and I, I, I didn't have my 15, I just kept going, calling through the entire binder. So. So you wouldn't close that out even if somebody said, well, who I had this one lady, she was pretty funny. She said, I birthed my kids. They can pay for my debts. They, they, she what her kids? She birthed her kids. So she, they could pay for her death. Look, <laughs> by the way, like that's uh once again, that's like a smoke screen answer it's for me, at least I would go, I'm so sorry about that. But like, is there somebody in the, in the world that you love? And I'll like, seriously wait for her. Cause like, if she says no, like that's really sad, right? Like that's, that's really sad. And by the way, sometimes it is that way. So like, I'll go, is there anybody that you actually do love? Yeah, this person. Okay, cool. We can leave the money to them. Doesn't have to be your kids. You know, once again, I was just trying to find a way to uh, to get them to have. Because here's the other thing, right? So like Drain, that's a great, great question. So she hates her kids, apparently. Does she hate her kids when she filled out the form? Probably. No, I don't think she hates her kids. She was just saying that like her kids are going to take care of it. She, she, they, they had a talk and she said, I birthed them. They're going to pay for my oh, fear. Oh, birthed them. I thought you said she, you burned them. Well, oh, no, she birthed them. Birthed. No, no, no. So, okay. That's so, by the way, that's one of the objections you'll get for final expense is, oh, my kids will take care of it. 
This is my answer, okay? Hey, I buried my mom and my dad in the last six months. And like, I make a lot of money and I still didn't want to pay for that. Most people marry, when they die, they leave behind businesses, bank accounts, and assets. You're leaving a bill. That's not fair to your kids. And by the way, because you leave it on your kids, this is probably what's going to happen. They're going to go fund me or do car washes. If you want to be that person, go right ahead. But the average car wash brings in 175 bucks a day. How many car washes do they need to do to help pay for your funeral or cremation or whatever the hell they, they want to do? You know what I mean? Like, that's not a good enough reason for me. You know? So... Another question real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm not, not that good at dialing. So obviously we're not going to come out the gate just booking 15, right? So say Monday's the dial day and I'll book like maybe three, four for Tuesday. Now on that Tuesday, what would you do? Like what would be your game plan? Would you just go in the morning to try and book more for Tuesday evening or how, how would you play it out? Until you get good enough to, you know, book 15 in one day out session. You know what I mean? That's a great question. Here's what I would do. I will book all those appointments after 11 o'clock. So, like, let's say you said you booked three appointments. All three of those appointments will be after 11 o'clock. You want to know why? From 7.30 to 10.30 in the morning, I'm going to dial the phone on Tuesday. Just because Tuesday is not a dial day doesn't mean I can't dial the phone on Tuesday. By the way, Mondays and Thursday dial days are reserved for top producers. If you're a top producer, you dial those days because you have appointments the next two days. If you're a brand new agent, every day is a dial day because you need to learn that skill set. So you would try and book for that Tuesday, like morning, like, hey, I'll, I can, I'm Tuesday coming out morning, here. I'll, yeah, Tuesday morning, I'll book for that evening or that afternoon or I'll book for the following day. Okay. Because okay. remember, what are the hot spots? 7.30 to 10.30, right? And 4.30 or 4 in the afternoon until 8 p.m. So like if I have three appointments tomorrow, I prefer those three appointments to be after 11. They can be at noon, they can be at two, they can be at four, whatever. But from 7.30 mm -hmm. to 10.30 in the morning, I gave myself dial time. Perfect, perfect. Now, yeah, I got like a solid one. If tomorrow. you're a face-to-face -face agent, Right. What, what was that? If you're a face-to-face -face agent, in between those appointments, go door knock them. Perfect. Because here's the thing, right? So there's companies out there, because I can't name names because this call is being recorded, that they teach their agents, when you get a final expense lead, just show up at the door. And that's, and that, those companies have been around for like 50 years. Like they definitely know what they're doing. The other thing I can tell you, sometimes you'll get a final expense lead that does not have a phone number on there. It doesn't mean they're not interested. It just means they hate receiving calls. So they just want you to show up at their door. That's the other thing is you, because you don't understand the psychology of the client. So like I used to, I remember when I was brand new, I used to get leads, final expense leads. And they just have an address, like the client would handwrite name, date of birth, address, and left the phone blank. And I'm like, why would they do that? And then my buddy Andrew was like, you're stupid. They're doing it because they don't want you to call. They just want you to show up. And I was like, really? And then what happened was like, when I actually had the time to show up, they've been like, we've been waiting for you for a long time. We sent that form in about a three and a half weeks ago. Like you never left a phone number. They're like, yeah, because we wanted you to show up. It's like, oh, well, that's one way to look at it, you know? So, door knock, resolve your leads. What do you say for out of town objection? Oh, we're going out of town tomorrow. Can't, can't do it tomorrow. When do you get back? Okay. No, I'm sorry. Just... Like, when do you get back? You're going to come back home. Oh, we'll be back. This is your home, right? You're going to come home. You right, right. Cool. When do you get back? Just follow up with him, huh? 
No. Or go, hey, I can do it over the phone. Take about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to wait to get back. <laughs> Remember, dude, for me, all objections are just smoke screens. They're not real for me. You know, like kind of like what I said, Jordan, if you knew he was going to die tomorrow, how quick would you be to insure him today? True. What if he dies because he's on vacation? Car accident on the way there. He goes hiking and a, a bear mauls him. I don't know. Right? Like, dude, you don't know. Right. Like, we don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, by the way, like, don't take this really wrong. Like, people go, ah, you know, accidental death policies suck. Da 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 da. I'm like, cool. Tell Kobe Bryant's family that, because they definitely plan on him dying in a in a helicopter crash, right? Like, nobody plans on this stuff. It just happens. You know, so that's why I'm saying I want you to think that way, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah, Nobody has any questions. Both Courtney's, both Al's. Karen, Art, Jamie. Okay, I got another one. Please I was do. running into this this morning. Oh, this is a scam. This is a, they're calling, this is a scam. Stop, no, mm -mm. So I actually uh, overcame one and I booked I, I kind of said, um, oh, you must be tired of all the phone calls, huh? That's exactly and what I was saying. Okay. I was like, Do you feel that way because someone came out and probably like took advantage of you, boss? Because like there's no reason why you would send that back into us if you thought this was a scam. Like I wouldn't send my personal information out on the internet or you know, whatever whatever the type of lead is. Uh, Bob, I, I just wouldn't do that. So obviously you did it. Like, did you think it was a scam before you did it? Like, that's really weird. <laughs> Perfect. Um, hey Steve, do you uh, do you do phone also? Like one call close, or do you I just do appointments? So like, like I haven't ran, I haven't sold insurance in a year and a half because I'm blessed to have a big team that I built. That you know, I, if I sold insurance, it would hurt the team because I would neglect them. Got it. Um, Got it. I have a lot of people on my team that sell insurance over the phone. You know, so like Samantha O'Toole, Brandon Kitchings, like we have a live dials, you know, FFL home office. Oh, yeah. Um, so like, yeah. But I've done some phone sales. I just wouldn't say like I'm a master at it, but I've done them. Got it. Now, someone, did Samantha start by doing it over the phone or did she start by? Yeah, over the phone, dude. Over the phone? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I really like. Um, but Obviously, face to face is just a lot easier to a hundred percent. A lot of objections would not be there. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got to remember, like face to face, they can see you. Yeah, right. Like, uh, and I always say this: like, like most people are not like you're not like aggressive looking, or like you you don't look like you're harmful. So yeah, like yeah. they'd let you in the door, like, like, thank you for bringing this up, by the way, Art, think about this, like all you guys on the call, right? Your mm -hmm. clients get a form in the mail or online. They put their name, address, date of birth, phone number in and send it back to a complete stranger. Really weird. Right. I, I wouldn't do that. I don't think y'all would too, but they would. And then yeah. a stranger calls them to say that they're coming over to sell life insurance and they're like come on over like think about how much trust they have in you in the process yeah you know what i mean yeah. like that's the reason why i'm saying it's like you can't take your own thought process and put it on them because you wouldn't fill out a form y'all wouldn't want somebody to come over your house i'm telling you this right now i wouldn't want somebody to come to my house especially if i didn't know you i, I honestly wouldn't want it either <laughs> but they would yeah Yep. So they trust you. So because you have their trust, they'll mess it up. You know what I mean? I see him, yeah. 
that's why I'm saying like the virtual stuff is a lot harder. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's a lot more difficult because they can't see you. You know? Yeah. Virtual is a lot more uh, transactional. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. You got it. Anybody else? Last question? Because it is. Yeah, real quick. Go ahead. What's up, Al? Um, you're, uh, what's up, brother? Um, your dial time, you said, so that's when I didn't get it. So 7.30 to 10.30, and you said like 4 to 8. Was there a time in between if I'm doing telesales? Was there a time in between? I think I missed that. Yeah, I mean, you know, so like, by the way, those were my favorite times to dial. It didn't mean I didn't dial. For favorite my- times. Got gotcha. Yeah, it didn't mean I didn't dial from 11 to 4. It just meant that my favorite times to dial were in the morning and in the evenings. You know? Got you. Yeah. That's fair enough. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anybody else? Hey, Stephen, real quick. The second form that you uh, screenshot with us, where Mm -hmm. is that? I'll put it up on that website right now, actually. I need to upload it on the virtuals. Yeah, it's just a few questions regarding the power questions, and that's it. But I'll get that up on the FFL online training website literally when I get off of here. Okay, thank you. You got it. We're good. All right, guys. Hey, I appreciate every single one of you guys. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help you or anything you need from myself, Trey, Joe, please let us know. We're all here to help. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll end with this, right? I always tell people I would rather have, like so many salespeople come to us and go, I can sell ice to an Eskimo. And I'm like, and you will probably suck at selling insurance because like you won't pick up the phone to book the appointment, right? I would <laughs> rather have someone that's amazing on the phone and they suck in the home rather than someone that sucks on the phone and is amazing in the home. Like, I'll tell you that right now. Like some people go, hey, you know, the phone is like 80% of what we do. 15% is the in-home, 5% is the product knowledge. I'm like, no, 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 no. The phone is 100% of what we do because if you can't get into the house, you don't have an opportunity to present. You don't need to know the product knowledge because you don't have a reason to. So like I would get really, really, really good on the phone. It is what we do here. And like, once again, there's only like three real objections. And if you can overcome those objections a few different ways, It's like knowing the answers to the test. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Um, I will see you guys soon. Be blessed.